What's up everybody? So I know I didn't post a video last week. Um, I'm going to try and get the uh, chassis somewhat started to be assembled. Um, I've received the uh, rear air ride suspension. So I'm gonna try and start doing the uh, initial assembly of the rear air ride. Uh, I've also sandblasted the front beam. I've completely disassembled it, which was my last video. Um, in between the last video and now, I've actually sandblasted it. I've got new uh, needle bearings for the front ball joint arms. So I'm gonna sand, I'm gonna prime it, paint it, and then I'm gonna start uh, reassembly of the chassis. And uh, I'm hoping to get the entire rear air ride suspension at least mocked up. I don't know that I'll get it completely welded in and, and painted in this episode, but I should be able to at least show the basics of uh, what needs to be in, what needs to be ground down, where it needs to be welded, what needs to be cut on the trailing arms, and all that good stuff. So, hopefully, you guys will really enjoy this video that I'm going to present to you today, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But thanks for tuning in. Check out what's happening now. All right. So now that I have the trailing arms painted and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and put these urethane bushings in to the front end of the trailing arm. Once I get those done, I'll mount these onto the chassis and then I'll start mounting the uh, spring plate with the uh, urethane bushings that I have for the spring plate. But these are going to need to be pressed in and they need to be greased. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grease these, press them in. When I get them done, I'll show you when I'm putting them on the chassis. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my urethane bushings installed in here. I don't have the bolt tightened down. Got them installed over here. I don't have the bolt tightened down. And I've got my urethane donuts inside of each one of the torque tubes i'm not going to grease them because i'm going to take this back apart because i got a lot of shadows from where i i forgot to put seam sealer on this chassis and i put seam sealer on here and then i resprayed it but i didn't have enough paint to do the whole chassis so i don't know if it's going to show up in the video it looks like it will you can see a little dust mark across where i was painting and this looks dull compared to where i painted over top of the uh seam sealer so i'm going to respray the entire chassis plus i've got a i've got a grind back here so that i can weld the bar for the uh, air ride so it's got to be repainted anyway so i'm gonna i'm not gonna grease all this stuff up because i don't want grease everywhere i'm just gonna partially assemble it so that i can get the geometry and everything figured out on the arms plus it looks like i missed this back side of this arm everything else looks good but that looks like primer um, this one does not look that way. So I actually, I got this one, but I missed this one. So I got to respray that anyway. So I'm not going to put any grease on here, uh, for right now, uh, until I get everything figured out so that I can repaint it. After I repaint it, then I'll grease everything up. Okay. So now I have the urethane bushings down inside of there. You can see the red down in there. I've got all that tightened down. Got the other side tightened down. I've got my bolts set in for the trailing arms to bolt to the spring plates. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down and tighten down that bolt, get it to where everything's sitting where it's supposed to. And then I gotta start modifying. So according to the instructions that I got with the kit from Air Cooled, this needs to be chopped off flush and then need to drill a 3 8 hole through the center of it so I can put the bump stop on there. Cause this needs to be able to go up further than that so that it can hit, so that the bump stop hits right there but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all this down and then I'll uh, mount the shocks that came with the air-cooled kit and then I'll start looking at how everything needs to be laid out for the uh, air ride suspension. Okay, so the new shocks that come in the air-cooled kit require these little spacers or sleeves to be pushed into these urethane bushings. So just push them in. That way when you tighten the bolt down, it doesn't collapse it. Okay, so at this point I have everything rough installed. Um, everything's tightened down. The suspension moves, but it's kind of stiff because I don't have any grease on it, but I'm okay with that. Uh, the only thing that I do not have completely mounted are the shocks on it, on both sides. I've got the top in, but I don't have the bottom in because I don't want them to get in the way while I'm cutting these bump stops off. So what I've decided to do, I don't know if it's going to be easier to cut it with a Sawzall or if it's going to be better to cut it with a cutoff wheel. So I'm going to try it with both and see which one's easier. But essentially what I have to do is this little nub right here has to be cut flush with this piece. So I'm just gonna run the Sawzall straight across here, and then on the other one, I'm gonna use the grinding wheel. We'll see which one does better. All right. 
let's see how horrible this works. Actually, it looks like this is gonna work out pretty good. I may do the saws on both if this works really easy. Yeah, I'm gonna do saws on both. I don't think it's worth using the grinding wheel. That was way too easy. So now what I need to do is I need to drill a 3 8 hole through the center in here and through the center of the other side and then I can mount my bump stops. Okay, as you can see, I've drilled a hole through the center of the bump stop. They're not in the dead center, but they're close enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the new low profile bump stops and then I'll mount the shocks and then I'll start doing the uh, work on fitting the bar for the airbags. So I've already got the airbags pre-assembled. I've got a single bolt in the bottom, tightened down. I've got these bolts in the top, tightened down. And what I did was I centered it up over this fitting so that when I go to uh, take it apart and reinstall it, it's right in the dead center. I uh, did it on both of them. Now, when I go to put these onto the bar, um, it says that I need to collapse it but I think that's gonna cause issues with trying to align it up. So what I'm more than likely gonna do is I'm going to unbolt it from here, get it to line up with the center of the trailing arm, figure out where it needs to be, and then it says the trailing arm angle and the angle of this plate need to be the exact same angle. So I'm gonna use my angle gauge. I'll put an angle gauge on the trailing arm right across that ridge. So I'll put, a, I'll put it right across here and get the angle on it, and then I'll get the same angle on here and we'll go from there. Okay, now I have put the uh, transmission back onto the chassis and I've mounted the shocks to each of the trailing arms. The reason I put the transmission back on there is to make sure that when I weld the bar in between here and here, I'm not gonna interfere with the top of the transmission. So I'm gonna go get the bar and set it in here and show you what I'm getting ready to do. Okay, so the bar that Air Cooled provided is a three-piece bar. So you've got these outer sleeves, a center bar, and then another outer sleeve. What has to happen is I'm going to have to grind down right here. I'm not exactly certain where it's going to go yet. i got to wait until I get everything sitting where I need to have it sitting. But I've essentially got to jack up this trailing arm and get it all the way up to the bump stop is hitting here. Then I need to center this over that trailing arm. I need to center the upper mount over the top, over the center of the trailing arm. And that's where I need to tack it in. And it needs to be at the same angle as the trailing arm when the trailing arm's all the way up. Once I do that, then I can tack the, I can tack the arm here. I can tack the tube here and I can tack here and there and get all of it basically set into place so that I can take it to my brother-in-law's shop and use his 220 welder to uh, burn all this stuff all the way in. But I wanted to have the transmission in there so that I make sure I'm not gonna cause any interference with the transmission. And it looks like I'll be all right. Um, it does look like it might be a little bit of a bitch to get the transmission back out, but the bar may, I may have the bar sitting down too low right now. But as you can see right now, that bar is sitting almost right on the transmission. So I am gonna have to raise it a little bit uh, I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit to see where I'm going to have it sitting. But once I get it figured out, I'll pick back up and we'll carry on with this uh, installation. All right, guys, after welding that bar in or getting it tack welded in, um, I have to totally agree with the instructions in this. If you are not an experienced fabricator, don't try this because um, I'm a very experienced fabricator and I'm having a little bit of difficulty with it. So if you're not well versed in welding and cutting and fitting metal the way that you're supposed to and getting all the gaps as close as possible, do not attempt this by yourself. 
take it to a shop and have somebody do it because this is a very difficult job. I thought this was going to be basically a uh, shade tree thing that's, that people at home can do, but I'm going to be completely honest with you. If you are not a fabricator, do not try this at home. It is very difficult. That being said, let me flip the camera around, show you what I've done. All right, so essentially what I've done is I had to, I had to cut the, the tube a little bit to get it to shape to the shock tower. And I basically got one finger width between the bar and the shock on both sides. And I put a level on here, made sure it was level across. I'm basically flush with the top of the shock mount or the shock arm on both sides. Now that that stuff's in there, I'm gonna put a couple more tacks on here, uh, one on the bottom on each side. So I'm gonna put one down here and one down here. I'm gonna tack that in. Then I'll put a tack here and a tack here. Then I'm gonna start trying to fit the uh, bag, upper bag mounts. All right, guys, I was gonna try and weld in the upper mounts, um, but according to the instructions, they want you to have the bag mounted onto the upper mount and the lower mount um, while you're trying to weld it in. And with the bags, without air fittings in them, the bags are fully uh, extended. And when I try and push down on them, it's moving the control or moving the trailing arm. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna run up and get some uh, half inch uh, pipe plugs. And I'm gonna compress the bags, screw in the pipe plugs so that the bag stays collapsed so that I can go ahead and weld these in so everything stays straight and right where I need it to be. Um, I don't want to take any chances with this because I'm already been fighting with the, uh, with the top bar, uh, getting it to line up correctly. I don't want any hiccups when I go to weld the, uh, upper bag mount and find the center of the trailing arm for the lower bag mount. So I'd like to take all the guesswork out of it. So I'm going to run up to a hardware store and, uh, pick up two pipe plugs, half inch, I think is what they are, but I'm going to take the fittings with me just to make sure. And, uh, what I'll do is I'll compress the bag. And while the bag is compressed, I'll screw in the pipe plug to hold it in a deflated state. That way the bag is collapsed. I can still put it in place. That'll allow me to get the angle of the trailing arm and the upper bag mount at the same place because the bag will be what's holding it straight. Um, and that's basically the biggest issue with this thing is you don't want the bag being crooked when it's all the way collapsed. Um, and you don't want it rubbing on anything uh, throughout the stroke of the, of the bag. So I'm, I'm going to go do that once and it's going to get too dark for me to film after I run up to the store. So I'm just going to have to pick up tomorrow. So next part of this video you'll see should be tomorrow when I'm welding in the upper and when I'm welding in the upper mount, marking the lower mount to cut out the trailing arm where I need to cut it and then welding in the lower mount. Hopefully I'll be able to have all this, uh, all the fabrication work done tomorrow. And then, um, Obviously, I'll have to tear everything back apart so that I can repaint the chassis and then uh, I'll reassemble it. All right, everybody. So I've got the upper bag mount tacked into place. Um, so I tacked it and I, I marked where I wanted it. You can see where I put my marks. I, I lined it up visually where I wanted it. Used my angle gauge to figure out if it was at 10 degrees because that's what the trailing arm is when it's all the way in the up position. <laughs> tack welded it in at 10 degrees then i put a couple more tacks in there just to hold it in place because i knew if i put this bag in there it was going to break it loose because of how much pressure the bag's under uh it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to get the bag to fit in there but i got the bag to fit in and then now what i've done you're probably not going to be able to see it but i've put that mark right there and that mark right there and that's basically the outline of the circle for the bottom and now what I need to do is I need to cut the trailing arm for that circle to fit into here and then weld it in. Now I gotta make sure that I don't interfere with the brake line bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bag, pull this bag off. I may even pull the trailing arm off to make the modifications. Uh, it might make it easier. Um, but yeah, my next step is to uh, get that lower circle lower bag circle mounted in and then then i'll do the other side i'm not going to do the other side until i get the side completely finished all right so now i've got the trailing arm modified i went a little too far forward um so i'm gonna have to fill that back in but it's no big deal i still need to trim this a little bit more because when it goes all the way up 
the edge of the bag is just barely touching, but I don't want anything interfering. But essentially what I've done is I've, I've cut out the entire lip off the top of this thing. So this entire lip right here, made it flat. And you can see it looks a little crooked right here, but when it's in the all the way uh, collapsed position, it's flat. So let me pull the thing up into the collapsed position so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here it is in the extended position. And then when it goes into the collapsed position, it's pretty flat, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this in the camera, but the bag is getting really close to that uh, angle that I've got cut right there. So I'm gonna cut a little bit further back, but this is essentially how that bag's gonna sit. I, I'm pretty happy with how everything works out. So I'm gonna pull the bag out. I'm gonna show you how I modify the arm. Then I'm gonna go ahead and burn this in or tack it in. And then I'm gonna stop for the day because it's Mother's Day and I need to go see my mom. So, all right, so my modifications to the arm actually look kind of nasty right now, but that's because I haven't cleaned anything up. But I'm, a, I'm essentially gonna have to cut a little bit more off of here just to clear the bag when it's in the collapsed position. And then I need to clean up in here. It was really hot when I was trying to get this shit out of here. But um, this area right here is opened up bigger so that the bolt head can fit in there. And then everything else just got cut off flush. And uh, I'm gonna weld it in. I gotta weld the, the bolt to the bottom of the airbag uh, plate and get it set. Then I'm gonna weld that uh, lower airbag circle onto here, clean this entire arm up and get it all squared away. Weld this in completely. Obviously I still have to do the other side, but I'm only talking about doing this one side right now. Um, get all that burn in and completely done. Then I'll strip everything apart and repaint it. But that's, that's essentially installing the air ride system without running the air management or anything because I don't have the air management yet and I don't have the front air ride yet. Um, I, I'm, I believe that it's supposed to be ordered at the first of this month or the first of uh, June, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, that's, that's out of my hands. So, um, but anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this the rest of the way fit, trim this little piece off here, and then get it squared away. And then I'm gonna go see my mom for Mother's Day. All right, guys, so that's essentially mountain <coughs> the rear air ride suspension obviously i still have to burn all this all the welds in uh get everything completely finally uh installed now you're gonna notice when it is in the extended position the bag is looks a little bit crooked which is fine in the extended position when it's in the collapsed position it needs to be as straight as possible so when this thing is collapsed it is actually really freaking straight all things considered oh i put a plug in here i gotta take that plug out i don't want water getting in there while it's sitting out here but when you collapse it the thing is damn near perfectly straight which is what you want so that's what i'm going with and uh i'll button it up and do the other side and uh You'll see the completed product in the next video. All right, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is a very difficult uh, project to take on as far as the air ride goes. Um, this is one of the more difficult things that I've done in my uh, time working on cars. Um, so I need to stress it again. If you are not an experienced, very well-versed fabricator, do not attempt this. This is not something for the average do-it-yourselfer. Um, there is a lot involved. And you need a lot of different skill sets, a lot of different tools, and you need to pay attention to detail because if those bags rub against anything, it can cause them to puncture in the future. So um, do not take this install lightly. Um, if you do use this video as instruction, please be aware that uh, everything that I did is only specific for my vehicle. Your vehicle could be completely different. Uh, you can use this as a general uh, informational video, but that's it. Um, I, I don't recommend doing anything that I've done in this video because there was a lot of custom fabrication and custom, uh, uh, work that had to be done in order to get this to fit properly. And I won't know how everything works as far as, uh, smoothness and all that 
until I get the front air rod and I get the air management installed because uh, I got I'm, I'm going to install the entire air ride system before I actuate anything so um, that being said I really hope you enjoyed this video uh, like always if you like what I'm doing uh, please like comment share subscribe let your friends see what I'm doing and uh, we can continue to have this channel to grow um, I'm planning on doing the front beam uh, next so what I'm hoping to do is finish the rear air rod get it completely welded in get the pan repainted i'm not going to cover that in a video because i already showed how i painted everything in, in the like three videos ago but i'm going to get everything burnt in uh get everything primed and painted get it back assembled to where it is now then i'm going to pick up doing the uh front beam so it may be two or three weeks before i make my next video because i gotta have the air ride for the front beam i gotta have the new replacement uh ball joints for upper and lower on both sides i've got new needle bearings so i'm gonna remove the needle bearings that are in there and replace them but i'm gonna paint the beam first before i replace the needle bearings so i'm gonna prime and paint the beam replace the needle bearings and then start reassembly of it with the front air ride suspension which i'm also going to be uh getting from air cooled um like I said, I believe it's supposed to be getting ordered the first of this uh, of June, but that it's out of my hands. Um, this is, like I said, this is not my car. This is Rusty's car, so um, he's just letting me do the work so that I can show it in my videos. So, uh, like always, I really appreciate every one of you tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great, great weekend. And to all the mothers out there, if there are any women watching these videos, happy Mother's Day, and uh I'll see you in the next one.